Hi guys, so I wanted to make a video today talking about how to lock your scripts to protect them from prying eyes. Because I know some people um, like to do that, they like to stop other people looking at their scripts and that's fair enough. So let us let me show you what I'm talking about. So I've got this lit piano library that I did for Stress of Sampling a couple of months ago. And this is the usual script edit button. If I show you on a new script slot, usually you'd click that and it would display any scripts you have in here in the script editor. So when you lock the script, what most people do is they click the lock with password button and they type a password in here and they hit OK. Uh, that's not very useful. Anybody using a cracked version of contact can still see your script that's not going to do anything to protect it. So I never use the lock with password option. Instead, what I do is I place, um, I, I prevent anybody from being able to click this edit button and displaying the script. So you can see that's not clickable at all. It doesn't do a thing. So that's what we're going to look at today, how to do that. And what prompted me to choose this as a video topic was uh, this post on the forum a couple of days ago. Somebody said, how can I lock my script and not allow anyone to see it? So that's what this is based on. So that's why we're doing this. So I've created an instrument called script lock. Um, I've opened up the script editor and currently we can open and close the script. So we're going to play around with that. Uh, I'll show you the folder setup I've got here. So I've got a folder on my desktop called script lock. There's the instrument, that's this NKI we have open in contact. This is a resource container, we'll recompile that as we go through. And then in resources, I've got something in pictures we'll look at in a minute, and then I've got scripts. So this one .ksp, this is the script we're going to write in Neil's Sublime Text Editor. And this one, the .txt, is what we're actually going to load into contact. Now back in 2011, the same question was asked on VI Control. Here's the post. And there's a whole discussion there. It's worth checking out this uh, this thread. I'll put a link down in the YouTube description so you can check out this thread. There's lots of good information in it. But the post I want to focus on is this one by MK282. And he came up with a solution for uh, stopping people clicking the edit button. And that's this code here. And the basic idea is you place a button over the edit button and you make it invisible by using a transparent image on top of it. So let's do that now. I'm going to actually I'm going to move that out of the way. I'm going to open Sublime Text and this is our script so I'll just uh, do the usual thing there and I'm just going to copy this bit of script from MK282 and paste it in. So what he created was a macro called set height and you provide it with the height of your GUI and the reason you provide it is so that it can work out where to place the button in relation to where the edit button will be because if you change the height of the GUI the edit button's position is going to move up or down. So I'll show you that quickly so if I was to I'll just write a quick script in here so if we set the GUI to 100 pixels, you'll see this grey area shift. So this is the GUI area we're talking about. So if we set it to 200 pixels, it's going to shift down further and the edit button moves along with it. Let's clear that out. So we pass in a height and this macro actually sets the height of the GUI for us. It calls the set UI height pixel function. And uh, then it does the calculation here to position a button over the edit button. So let's call it and let's actually see how this works. And we'll give it a height of 250 pixels. I'm going to comment out this one line. This line actually adds the invisible image and makes the button transparent. But I want to show you the button first. So I'll comment that out. Hit F5, paste it into contact. So there we go, the GUI is now expanded to 250 pixels and you can see there's a button being placed over the edit button which prevents you from clicking the edit button and opening or closing the, edit, the script editor window. 
So if you were to right click on this button, it's going to give you the MIDI automation. So we can go in and turn that off in contact, uh, in our script. So we'll do, I'll do that just at the end here. So I'm going to use the shorthand, I'm not going to write it all out. So this is the shorthand version that's available in this Sublime Text Editor. So what I'm doing there is just disabling automation for that one uh, switch control. So I'll paste that into contact. And now if I right click on here, the automation option will be gone, but there's another problem. Right clicking now bypasses the switch and we can hit the edit button underneath. So this effectively makes this switch method without automation um, useless. So what we can do to improve this is we can replace the switch with a slider, which is quite easy to do, so we'll do that now. And we'll give it the same name. The min and max don't matter because we're only using this for um, for the purpose of covering that edit button. I'm just going to comment out these two because for a, a slider we don't need to set the width and we don't need to set the text because a slider doesn't use those parameters. Everything else should be fine. I'm going to hit F5 and paste this back in. And now we've got a slider here. So this is good as well. We've got a slider. If I right click there's no automation. Now the next problem with this is um, using the script provided in that macro isn't quite perfect for a slider. There's a tiny gap here at the bottom where you can still click and access the edit button. Just there. Okay, it's about a one pixel gap. So all we have to do to change that is back in our script, this line here where it says UI height minus 21, we change that to uh, minus 20. So that's just going to move that slider one pixel down because all this line of code is doing is positioning that slider. We can also change it here to 34. I'll discuss what these, uh, what's going on here in a minute. So now if I hit F5 and paste it back into contact, got to find it and open it back up. There we are. Uh, now the slider's moved down and there's that little spot underneath where we can click has gone. So that's the solution, it's to place a slider over it like this. And to make it transparent, we use a PNG file, which has, it's just a completely transparent image. So just put this in, and now it's as if there's no slider there. And I'll show you that image. So in my resources folder, in my pictures folder, I've got one called lock.png. And if I open it up, you'll see there's nothing there. It's actually an invisible image. And I'll open it in Photoshop, so that'll give you a better idea of what I mean by an invisible image. So this is what the image actually looks like. It's just um, a rectangle, and it's completely blank, so it's got 100% um, transparency on the alpha channel. So when we save it as a PNG, that transparency information is embedded in the file. If we were to save this as a JPEG, it would be completely white, like that. The other thing to go along with it, which is also provided on um, this forum post, is the text file. And that's all you need in the text file. And that just says it has an alpha channel, there's no animation, so you just put one. And the rest of it, you can um, see, uh, is set up like that. And this image is uh, 63 by 24 pixels, but that doesn't really matter too much. Okay, so, so far so good, we can lock our um, instrument, but we did that by pasting into here. Now the obvious problem is we can't close the edit window because there's an invisible slider over it, so, um, so our script is exposed for everybody to see. So I'm going to show you the solution and um, the way I've come up with for implementing this technique. But before I do that, I'm going to show you how I used to do it and how um, a lot of people still do it and some of the disadvantages with other methods. 
So one way of doing it is applying the script from a text file in a resource container. So in here, if I go into my resources folder and the scripts, I've got this script uh, .txt. And there's nothing in there at the moment, it's blank. But if I was to create a resource container, I can then apply my script from this menu. It's blank. So it's just reading that text document and then I can hit apply and obviously there's no script in there so that's going to happen. But what it means is I can now open this text document and anything I put in here will automatically transfer into here. So I'll paste the script in, I'll hit save and then when I refresh you can see the script has appeared. Now obviously it's going to be locked because there's an invisible slider there. But what about if we do this? If we clear the script out again and save it just using the keyboard shortcut to save there. Refresh contact, so we're all nice and uh, blank again. Uh, close the edit window, paste the script back in, and I save once more. And now if I refresh, the script has been applied, but with the edit button closed, and the edit button can now no longer be clicked. So this is the stage most people get up to, and they go, right, my script's locked, it's safe but there's a catch, it's not quite, we're not quite done yet. Because what you'd do now if you were going to supply this to somebody else, you wouldn't want them to have your script text document because then they'd just see your script. So we'd bundle the resource container again with the updated script document. And then when you distribute your instrument to other people, you would provide them with the instrument file, the samples as well, if you had samples, we don't in this case, and the two resource container files. You wouldn't give them the resources folder. The problem with this is the resources file can be opened in a text editor, and at the bottom of it, it will contain your script. See, we've got it there on in it, declare UI slider, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to copy this into Sublime Text so we can see it more clearly. So if we ignore that bottom bit that I've copied as well, that's our script and it's all there, all perfectly viewable in the resource container. So securing your script this way doesn't secure it. So we've got to go back a stage and work out the best way to do that. So the only way to actually protect the script that I've found so far, uh, I'm just going to close this down actually and I'll just clear this one out. So we're back to where we started. The only way I've found so far is to actually, you do have to paste the script into contact once you've finished all your editing. You paste it into here, and then we need it so we can hit the apply button and close the edit button, but then future users can't click the edit button again to reopen it. So we need a little sort of time delay thing so we can close the edit button, uh, close the edit window up. So I'll show you how I did, how I did that and how I've advanced this script from when it was first written um, and posted on the forum back in 2011. I've made some updates and used some of the new features of Nils's editor and uh, I'm going to show you that now. So I've modified this script a bit. I based it on this original macro but I used a function. So I'll write a function and I'm going to call it lock script rather than set height. I'm going to pass in the UI height. We're also going to pass in a variable called status but we won't worry about that just yet. We're going to declare a slider because we found that works best. We'll call it SLI no open. And so far this is the same as above. And we just need to give it a few parameters. So we need to set the picture to our transparent one, which in my case is called lock. We need to set its X position to zero, because it's always going to be a zero. We need to disable automation. And now we need to pick up the rest of this, uh, this little macro here. So what we need to do now is take, we're interested in this if statement. This stuff up here where it says in range UI height one to eight, 
That's if you're using Contact's old grid system for laying things out on your interface. I never use that, I just lay things out in pixels, so I always ignore this if statement, but if you are using the grid system, you'll need to incorporate this into your script as well. So write if in range UI height, which we're getting from our parameter here that we're passing in, 54 to 540. So this is saying if you have a, a if your GUI has a height between 54 and 540. And if it does, we want to um, we want to position our control on the Y axis to UI height minus 20. And if it isn't, if it's not between 54 and 540, then we want to position it on the Y axis at 34, like so. Okay, so what we've got here is a condensed version of this macro here. So all I've done is taken what MK282 posted on the forum and I've updated it a bit and altered it for my purposes, which doesn't include this grid thing. Um, the other part, if you're using the grid, you'll also need this array here. Okay, so let's update this to use my function now. Now, my function doesn't actually set the UI height. You can see that's done in MK's macro, but I'm not doing that. And the reason is I like to be able, I like the freedom to be able to set my UI's height outside of any function. I don't like it to be dependent on a function. So I, I do that separately. So I'll set it to 250, and then we'll call the function lock script. And we're going to pass in 250 because that's the UI height. And then this status parameter, which I haven't spoken about yet, we'll just include a number one. We'll, we'll come on to what that's doing in a minute. But if I hit F5 now and paste it in, we we'll should be back to where we were at the beginning when we first copied that macro over. Okay, so we've got the invisible slider. We can't click the button and our script is exposed. So this is where we want to be, but we need to be able to click that button to close it. So this is what we're going to do next. Uh, we're going to create a, func um, a variable called lock. And we're going to make this variable persistent. And we're also going to read in the persistent value straight away so that we can use this in on init. And we'll have the value accessible to us immediately. So that's the first thing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to increment this lock value. We'll do it down here. So we're going to say if lock is less than one, and by default lock will be zero when it's first created, because all variables are zero when they're first created. And we're going to increment lock there. So if lock is less than one, so when it's first created, increase it by um, one and it's only going to increase by one because we've got the limit of one there so the first time this function is called lock will be zero it'll come down here it will go is lock less than one yes it is it will increase lock the next time this function is called and it'll come all the way down it'll read uh, sorry it'll read in the value which we've got before which is one it'll come down here it'll say is lock less than one no it isn't because we increased it last time so it'll ignore this and what we're going to say is um, uh, just before this, sorry, we're going to hide the slider we've, we've created. And so you can see this, I'm just going to actually comment out the image part so we can actually see the slider. So we're going to set the sliders um, hide parameter to hide the whole control. So the slider is hidden and we're going to put an else here. And we're going to go slider hide hide part nothing. So if lock is greater than zero, we're going to show the slider. And if it isn't, it'll be hidden because we're hiding it by default here anyway. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a message just here, just before we increment the lock variable so that you can see what lock is and follow it through. And I'm just going to compile that and I'm going to paste it into contact. 
And if we look down here at the message bar, we can see that lock is currently zero. So if we go back to our script, we can see what's going to happen if lock is zero. If lock is less than one, so if lock is zero, then it's going to increment lock. So that's happened now because our message was before that happened. So now if we reload the script, it's going to read in the value of one from the increment. It's going to come down to here. It's going to say is lock less than one. No, it's not. So it's going to reveal our lock button because you can see it's not there currently. We can click edit. So if I close the edit, I refresh contact and our lock button appears and our script is now locked and it's not accessible in the resource container because we're not using a resource container. So this is the way we need to do it to uh, prevent people from seeing our script. It does also mean you can't access the script so there's no way for you to get back into here. So I've got a little solution for that because while you're working on your script you'll want to use a resource container and presumably um, the pragma command in Nils's editor to automatically update your script in the text document. Uh, right, so what we need to do is add a little thing in here so that we can work on our script and uh, easily disable this lock feature and re-enable it when we need it. So for that we're going to use this thing called status which I haven't come on to yet. I'm going to delete this macro now because we're not using that so just to make things a bit more clear. So we're going to need an, another if statement. I'm going to get rid of that lock message. And I'm going to put the usual message up in on in it there just to clear out the message bar. Just tidy up. Okay. So we're going to say if status, that's this parameter we're passing in here. We're going to say if that is equal to zero, then we want to reset our lock variable. We're going to reset it to zero. And because we're doing this after we've read it in, the persistence thing won't get in the way. If it's not zero, then we're going to do this stuff, where we actually implement the the locking. So this our this our locking mechanism. We increase that and we reveal the lock. And that's pretty much it. So now what we can do using this uh, this parameter here, if it's a one or anything that isn't zero really, but we'll say one. If it's a one, our script will be locked. If it's a zero, it won't be. This only applies when you're putting your script into contact through a text document and you're doing it for your development. Once you've finished your development, you need to paste it into the contact editor window like we did, refresh contact and your script will be locked. So let's just come out of here. Let's make it empty. We're going to apply it again from our text document. So I can close that up now. Let's go into here. Here's our text document. So I'm going to paste the script into here. Let's hit F5, paste it in. If I now go into contact and hit that, our script is applied, but the locking mechanism isn't applied. But if I go back into the script, change this from zero to a one, hit F5, paste it back into here. If you're using the pragma thing I mentioned earlier, you don't have to do all this back and forth with the copying and pasting. And then reload, and we've got to reload twice because we've got that lock command. So we reload twice, and then the script is locked. And the one last thing to do, of course, is to make sure the lock image is applied so that we don't see the slider. So I'll do that, hit F5, paste it into here once more, reload, and there we go, the script is locked. So this is how you'd use it for development, your script is locked. When you're finally ready to release, then you've got to come back into here, make it empty again, and actually paste it in manually, and do that. And now the script is locked, and it's ready to be shipped to whoever you want. And hopefully, they can't see your script. Now, if you've followed this through and you can find a way, I'll put that on the screen so you can see it, if you can find a way that the script is still accessible, put it in the comments below on YouTube or put it on the VI Control Forum and let me know because I've been trying to see with all these methods, I, I implement them and I see is there a way around it, is there a way to circumvent it and so far every method I've looked at, there's been a way to get at the script. So this method I think 
I'm pretty sure you can't get at the script, but if you know that there's a way you can, there's a way around this, maybe there's you can open the NKI in some other program and view the script that way, please let me know so that I can see if I can find another way around this. But I hope that it's uh, I hope that it's secure, and I hope that you can use it in your script. I'll put those forum links in the description on YouTube if you look below the video. Uh, leave any comments um, below the video or on the VI Control threads. And don't forget, I've got other videos. There's a whole contact scripting tutorial series at extantaudio.com, and I'll put the link for that below as well. Uh, in that series, we cover all the basics of contact scripting up to more of the advanced stuff. But there are some little bits and extras that didn't make it into that series, so things like this lock script. So I'm making little videos to sort of keep those bits up to date as well. So hope you found this useful. Hope you can implement it in your scripts and uh, keep your code secure. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.